Wonderful partner. Today, I want to talk to you about something really important. How to walk and live in the Spirit in these days. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you an understanding deep in your heart and spirit that will make it so clear and so beautiful and so life-changing because this is what we need more than anything else today. How do we live in the Spirit? How do we live without the limits of the flesh and the world? Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you're going to speak to us. You're going to show us from your word what this all means to you, be the glory, and bring us into that place, Lord, that we will walk in the Spirit daily, live in the Spirit daily, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3. I'm going to read verse 21 through 23. Later, I'm going to pray with you that the Lord will touch and heal your body and make you whole, and pray with you that your needs will be met. But now let's focus on the Word. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 3, beginning at verse 21. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, meaning Peter, or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Now, the minute we as believers step out of the old life, we begin walking into a new walk, frankly, a new world. And in that walk and in that world, there are no limits. Meaning, we are delivered from the world of the natural into a world that is invisible. And this is where this becomes reality, where Paul says, all things are yours, meaning in the spirit, all things are yours. But eventually that will work itself out in our soulish realm, in our physical world, and then we will live it. For example, and I've told that so often, how could Moses stand before the Red Sea? The Red Sea in front of him, the Egyptians behind him. Now, in the natural, it would look they're trapped. Not to Moses. Because Moses did not see the sea. Moses did not see the Egyptians that came to destroy Israel. He saw God. What happened to him? How did he get into that world where nothing affected him in the natural? Now, the, the people of Israel cried out, it says, to God. They, they were afraid, not Moses. Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That man lived and walked in the spirit. Let's take another example, Caleb and Joshua. They go into the promised land. Twelve spies go in. Ten of them see giants. Ten of them see it's impossible to win. We can't make it in here. We are grasshoppers in their sight. We were grasshoppers in our sight. But Caleb and Joshua saw God. They did not see the giants. Oh yeah, they were there physically but they were completely ignored because the spiritual reality overpowered the physical reality in Moses and Caleb and Joshua. How about King David? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Now, that valley is a terrifying place, I'm sure, but he did not see the valley. He saw God. How about the Lord Jesus? He was on the way to the house of Jairus. The, the girl had died. And the Lord looks at Jairus and says, only believe. Come out of your world. Come out of your limits. 
believe. He walks in the house with him, and he raised that little girl from the dead because the Lord Jesus lived in the spirit. Or uh, Lazarus had died. The Lord did not see it in the same way the apostles did. He said, he's asleep. Let's go wake him up. Well, if he's sleeping, he'll wake up on his own. And finally said, the Lord said, he's dead. Yet when he came there to Bethany, Mary and Martha said, Lord, he's been dead for a few days. Only believe. If you will believe, you will see another world. You will see the glory of God. Dear Lord, I feel that. I'm only just saying that to you. If you only believe, you will see a different world. You'll see the glory of God, not your brother in a grave. He spoke the word, and Lazarus was raised from the dead. And we see it over and over, for example, in the life of Paul. He's on a ship. There's a storm. No problem. He looks at all the people on that boat, over 200 of them. He says, don't be afraid. All is well. All is well. He saw in the spirit. He didn't see in the natural. Now this has happened to many of us, I'm sure. It's happened to me here and there in my lifetime. You know, as, as I get older, I want it more. And I found the secret, I believe, to walking in the spirit. I'm sitting on a plane, flying back from Tokyo. Now we are not far from Hawaii, but the navigational systems all stopped working on the plane. The pilots were full of fear, the flight attendant full of fear. Everybody on that plane is crying except me, except me. And there was a private plane about 11 p.m. at night over the Pacific Ocean. And we're told that they don't know where Hawaii is to land and fuel. They were 300 miles off track. They didn't know where Hawaii was. And the Lord spoke to me and said, all is well. I was the calmest man on that plane. Everyone is crying, some of them hysterically. Not me. I'm not boasting. It just happened. Because when the, when the Lord spoke to me, it was absolute reality. All is well. We landed after they had called the tower, and there was a big fight between two men on what to tell the pilots. There was one unbeliever who told them one thing, and they listened to the unbeliever who would have crashed. There was a Christian man there, in the, in the, at the airport who told the pilots to tune in to an AM Christian station in Hawaii, in Honolulu. And they heard that beam and flew down like the Japanese did in the Second World War. When we landed, the minute we touched, I was told that later, the minute the, the wheels touched, we were out of fuel, completely out of fuel. And the pilot said, had we been only one minute late, would have crashed and died. But I'm still here talking about it. At that moment on that plane, I was in the spirit. God wants us to live in that world all the time, not just on a plane when there's danger, not just when there's a bad situation that has arisen. Living in the spirit is our amazing life. And we can go there daily, where we are free from the limits of the natural world. We're free from the limits that are around us. I've told the story, I know people sometimes have a hard time believing it, but in 1983, I was on a plane crash on a Cessna single engine. We were flying from Naples to Orlando and crashed in a place called Avon Park. And while that plane was rolling, they hit a tree. They, they ran out of fuel on the, on the plane. Also at night, by the way, I preached in Naples, Florida, flying back to Orlando. My wife, Suzanne, had said prior to us leaving, 
She said, the Lord told me this plane will crash. Naturally, we didn't believe her because everything looked okay. And I was young in those days. That's 1983. Now, on the way back, the pilots looked back with free fear in their face and saying, we're out of gas. Imagine running out of fuel. Because the indicators showed full, but the tanks were actually going on empty. And now we hit a tree. We aimed for the air, for the runway, but they missed the runway and hit a tree. In front of that tree were electric wires. Had they not hit that tree, we would have all died. But they hit the tree and the plane rolled like this. One day I'll show you a picture. In fact, I just found it of that plane destroyed. And yet while that plane was rolling, holy, holy laughter came, came on me. I began to laugh in the spirit. To this day, I don't even believe it actually happened, but it actually happened. I began laughing in the spirit. In the natural, it makes no sense. I literally was released from that moment, in meaning the surroundings. And I knew everything in me, knew all is well, and I was rejoicing. Can you believe it? That this could actually happen? And that was one of my first experiences with being released from the natural, no limits. So it says, the world, life, death, things present, things to come, all are yours. Meaning that we have power over the world, over life, death, things present, things to come, all are yours. Now what an amazing statement. Let no man glory in men, all things are yours. So. We step into this amazing new life. We are free from the limits, basically, of the old life. So limitations known in the old life now disappear through Jesus. And through Jesus, eternity is the life. No limit to eternity. And so the Bible says that we have to start thinking in that way. So our faith releases us from past memories, from present fears and worries, and future fear and worries. So we are released from the troubles, basically, of the past, which is mostly memories, present and future. We are free from the limits, from the fears, from the bondage that comes in with it. And that's what this means. So uh, what, what do we do? How do, we, how do we enter into this amazing world? Now, let's just look at Moses one more time because it's a very powerful uh, revelation given because I want you to get that. I really do. I don't just say it. I want you to come into that world that belongs to you, especially today with all the negatives out there. So it says that God spoke to Moses and said, I'm reading Exodus 14, 16. Lift thou up thy rod, stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. Well, to human logic, feelings, that makes no sense. So stretch your hand over the sea, and you, Moses, divide it. You speak to it. Now, please notice what God says here. You divide it. And, and the minute Moses does that, God takes over. So in the, in the natural, to move forward means to drown, to uh, divide a sea with a rod, no sense whatsoever. But what did he see? He saw the word. He saw God. He didn't see the sea. He saw the covenant. He saw the covenant. He saw the covenant. He saw the promises. How beautiful. All right. Um, Hebrews 4, 2 says, the reason Israel could not see God is because there was no faith in their life. They were, they were limited. They were limited because they lacked that one blessed power called faith. And so it says in Hebrews 4, to, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, nor being mixed, not being mixed with faith in them that 
that heard it. Now, it all begins with the word of God. This is what it starts. Think about this. Let's say, let's say someone gave you a brand new car. And all you had is a brand new car. So it was a gift. That's that's pray it'll happen to somebody watching, okay? Let's just say somebody gave you a brand new car. But it had no fuel in the in the in the tank. All they did is give you the keys for a new car. It is your job now, your duty to go to a gas station and get the fuel. All right. The car would be like the new life in Jesus. So God comes and says, I'm going to give you a new gift. I'm going to give you a new life. Okay? And God gives you the key to the new life, but he does not give you the fuel. You have to go find the fuel. What is the fuel? God's word. So just like someone going to a gas station, filling the gas tank with fuel, so it is with the Christian life. We have to go to the Word of God because God's Word is the fuel we need for the engine of the Christian life to work, for this new life to work. So the minute you you put the fuel in, it's still no good till you do what? Till you use that key and you ignite, turn the engine on. What is that? Prayer. And when both come together, the fuel and the ignition come together, now that engine starts to move the car to a different place. So in the spirit, same thing. The fuel is God's word. The key, the engine comes on. That's prayer. And then we move into a different world altogether called the world of the spirit. So this is kind of a simple example that we can at least catch on to say, ah, so the first step is get the fuel. You already have the new life. You already have the new life. You're already born again. God has given you a new life in Jesus. But it's your responsibility to get the fuel. When when the manna came to the Israelites, it did not show up inside the tents of Israel. It was in the desert out there. So they had to go find it. They had to go get it. God Almighty wants you to go find the fuel. Find the word out there. And think about how long they had to walk. We're talking about three million people. Think about the lines, <laughs> okay? The crowds going looking for the man every every morning, except on the Sabbath. There's a big crowd coming and going. So we ourselves have got to go out, out of our tent, out of our comfort zone, and get the fuel, get the word. That word is what begins to change us. It says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Let the word of Christ dwell richly within you. And the first result of the word is what? Fellowship with God. So I want to go back with you to uh, the book of Psalms, Psalm 119. And by the way, I'm gonna be praying with you in just a few minutes for your, for your healing. Then I wanna to continue tomorrow, but I wanna show this to you, it's so, so powerful. Okay, it says, blessed, I'm reading verse one, two, and three. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and now that seek him with the whole heart. So, number one, I receive the word. I received, I will have to walk in the law of the Lord. I, 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 I have to, to receive and keep his testimonies. That's the word. And then the result is, ah, the engine is now able to be turned on. With no fuel, you can't turn the engine, it doesn't work. So you get the fuel, the word. And then that produces in you the desire to pray. So prayer is not a list of needs, which most of us can say that list in less than a minute. Prayer is born when you read the word of God, the scriptures, and and the Holy Spirit will use that to, to quicken you. David said, quicken me through your word. That quickens you. And now the quickened 
heart begins to talk to God in reality, in truth. It says, call upon him in truth. Well, I cannot call upon him in truth without the truth in me. So now when I call upon him in truth, meaning the word of God coming out of my lips. How? Because something in the word that I read moved me to ask for the same thing I just read. Maybe a promise, maybe the way God dealt with one of the saints. Something moved me to talk to God about his nature and so forth. What I was moved to say, I bless your name, Lord, for who you are. Because I was moved. Prayer begins. Now, when, when that prayer begins, something happens. It says in verse 3, they also do. Now there's action. They also do no iniquity. Meaning, they are able now to overcome sin. They walk away from the power of sin. And I've said something I want to repeat. When God justifies you, or justified you, he released you from the penalty of sin, which was the past, sins before you were saved. When God sanctifies you, you have to grow into God's righteousness. So in justification, God declares you righteous. In sanctification, you begin growing into that righteousness that sets you free from the power of sin. The power of sin is a different world than the penalty of sin, penalty of sin past, power of sin is present. We are free as the word comes into our hearts. Prayer is born and now we begin to move into a different world called the world of the spirit. Now, I wanna say one more thing. This is how we're able to put on Christ Jesus because in Romans, in Romans 13, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you in a few moments. And uh, you're going to start hearing some beautiful worship music in the next few seconds. Uh, there, there it is. But I want, to, I want to read this verse as the Lord prepares your heart. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. You know, we just read in Psalm, 119, how when you walk in the law of the Lord and keep it, and how when you pray, you will also do no iniquity, meaning the, the part of sin now is, is breaking. You're, you're not under its control. And in Psalm 1, well, let me just finish with Romans. That's how you put on the Lord. That's how you put on the Lord Jesus. And when his substance and reality manifests through his word, through prayer, you walk into this world. Where is it? It's Psalm chapter one. And we've read that Psalm so many times, but it's beautiful. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You're not walking in the old life, nor stands in the way of sinners, that's the old life, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, old life. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, present life, new life. In his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted. That's a brand new place, huh? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that brings forth fruit every season. His leaf will not wither. Well, that cannot, cannot be the old life. That's the world of the spirit. Whatsoever he doeth will prosper. Wow. Lord, bring them there. In the mighty name of Jesus, bring everyone listening, everyone watching into that blessed world, the invisible world the world where you dwell in, that your people will be free from the limits of the flesh, from the limits of the world, in Jesus' mighty name. 
Give them that hunger deep in their hearts for your word. Because Lord, that blessed word will produce the fellowship they need. And your word and fellowship will produce that life of the spirit. And now Lord, I also pray for those who are in need of healing. Believe God right now to heal you physically. Lord, touch them. I rebuke that sickness in their body. In Jesus' name. An infection in someone's ear, especially the right ear, God is healing you. Oh, Jesus, I give you praise for this. I give you praise for this. A lady unable to uh, be without pain around your stomach. God is healing you, my dear. You're just sensing a beautiful anointing just came on you. A skin allergy, very severe. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Um, I see somebody who keeps losing a lot of feelings, a feeling like in your neck. It goes numb a lot and, and you're not able to feel what you used to feel with your neck and right there, uh, this area back here in the, in the back of, the, of your head. You feel numbness, but you're not feeling, you can't feel your, your, yourself like you used to. God is touching you and healing you. Lord, I bless your holy name for your goodness and mercy. Heal your people in the name of Jesus. Some, someone with arthritis in your hand just left you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And now I want to pray with you for your finances that God will bless you. That God will speak to you and bless you financially. That He'll prosper you, increase you. That everything you touch will increase and prosper. Lord, in Jesus' name, bless them. In Jesus' name, bless them. Meet every need in their life. Meet every need financially in their life. Yes, Lord, take away the fear from, of the future from them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You know, when we sow seed, we release an amazing power. When we sow seed, we release tremendous force into the natural world. Because the seed of that what we give to the Lord are many that becomes seed is spiritual. Money changes from a natural piece of paper or whatever you give by credit cards. What it released it releases a spiritual force. No, no different than the seed a farmer sows releases a spiritual force. Life comes out. That's not natural. That's a that's spiritual. Whether people know that or not, inside that seed that brings all the beautiful trees and fruit is actually a spiritual force. So think about every time you give, there's a spiritual force behind it that is released to give you the harvest. But you have to plant and you have to water the seed with praise. We water the seed and say, Lord, thank you for the harvest. Thank you that my needs are met today, that my future is secure. My children's future is secure. My family is secure. So go ahead and sow that seed right now. Plant it, and God will do the rest. And then just praise him and thank him, and he will come through for you right on time. You can sow right now on the platform you're watching me on. You can go to our website, benin.org, or you can simply text BHM 45777. Much love to you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Benny Hen Ministries has stayed on the cutting edge for the past five decades. The Lord made it clear that keeping and storing all archives and resources should be a top priority. Thus far, we've rescued and digitized 10,500 of the 13,437 tapes from the past half century. Pastor Benny's legacy, life's work, calling and anointing will be preserved for generations yet to come. Nearly 50 years ago, this great adventure known as Benny Hen Ministries began with one voice. Today, that one voice continues to be amplified 
over and over through every possible means. What happens next will be the greatest blessing of all. Isn't it wonderful what the Lord has done? And to Jesus be all the glory. I wanted to show you this beautiful report about the digitizing of thousands and thousands of hours already of the great meetings from the past. Because we want to keep them for our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. So we need your help still. So thank you, thank you. I just wanted to show you that your money is doing the job. What you gave in the past is really making it happen. But let's keep doing it for the Lord, please. This is for His glory. Because now it can go to every nation on earth, in every language on earth, because of your help. All right, you can give right now on the platform you're watching me on. You can go to our website, benihim.org, or you can simply text BHM45777. So thank you for loving, thank you for giving, and let's keep glorifying our wonderful Savior. Much love to you. Thanks again.